All right, guys. So here you got Habib and Ronaldo FaceTiming each other casually. Yeah, Ronaldo's chilling with his son and Habib with his friends. It seems like this sort of stuff happens quite often because neither Habib or Ronaldo put it on their feed or on their story. In fact, it was the friend of Habib who recorded it and put it on his story, and then Habib reshared it on his story. But did you notice something that was really beautiful in this? What do you think? I like turtles. Yeah, sometimes people have this niggling feeling in their head that if they practice their religion in public that people won't accept them yeah or they won't like them. This could be at schools where students don't feel comfortable saying I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend because of my religion mate. Or it might be at work where you might be too embarrassed to tell Dave from work that you don't go to the pub. So you go there and you order your orange juice or you might be too embarrassed to ask for a couple of minutes off just so you can pray your salah on time or do your wudu in the communal washroom. But there is an assumption being made when you think that people don't like you. You're assuming that the rest of you is fine and the only problem that's left is the religion. But when you look at famous Muslims who outwardly profess to be Muslim like Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Muhammad Salah, Habib, because these people excelled at what they did, people ended up respecting them and their religious beliefs. I mean you got Habib who's an unapologetic orthodox Muslim yeah he doesn't shake hands with women, he fasts, he prays and he's an embodiment of this advice of fix your relationship with Allah and Allah will fix your relationship with the people. Despite Habib doing all this he still has the adoration of the likes of megastars like Ronaldo and even teenage stars like Logan Paul. Khabib is the best fighter on the planet ever. So does the problem lie in following religion or does the problem lie in us and the skills that we have? Because sometimes we just haven't refined the skills, we're just not good at what we do. So you might be at work, you might be rubbish at your job. So then when you ask for time off to pray Salah, your boss gets cheesed off because you just you're a dosser mate, you just doss about. Is this merely stream of consciousness abuse or are you attempting to make a point? So you not praying Salah isn't gonna make you a better person, it's gonna make you rubbish on the inside now as well as the outside. So by all means work on your skills, make yourself valuable and employable. That's right but also keep your religion with you. But when you start scapegoating Islam for your own failures and inadequacies and what I mean by this is when we become religious we become lazy yeah we expect Islam to do everything for us. That we don't revise and then we hope that Allah will help us pass. We don't practice for our job interview and we expect to get the job and in some situations things aren't good for us but we then blame Islam. Yeah it could be uh, money, it could be the relationships or whatever it is. We don't understand fate. We don't understand the concept that we have the pixel, Allah has the picture and sometimes we just scapegoat our problems onto the religion. Why? 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 But we fail to realize that this is a world of means and you got to do your best and then Allah does the rest. I'll give you an example. Yeah, you got a person who practices their faith and you got a person who doesn't. The same problem may fall on both of them. However, Allah will give the strength to the practicing person that he can tolerate it and the problem will not break him. However, with the non-practicing person, the problem may destroy him. So Islam gives us that strength and when we forgo it, yeah, just for what people will think, then we turn to intoxicants, unfulfilling relationships and then even dark thoughts as well. But who's to blame? It's us because we let go of the rope of Allah. So yeah, I just wanted to end with this ayah where Allah says in the Quran in chapter 7 verse 196, Allah is the guardian of the righteous. It's a promise of Allah that if you are righteous, Allah will be your guardian. That doesn't mean problems won't come, it just means that you'll be more equipped to deal with them. If you want to find me, please just send me location, send me location.